You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Glenda Geek from Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Monday, September 9th, episode 3515, brought to you today by Worm Flooring. Good morning, Horse World, and oh, happy poop week, brought to you by Poseidon Animal Health. You've heard of Shark Week. Well, now there's something even more sinister. Welcome to Horses in the Morning Poop Week. Yeah, an entire week talking about your horse's poop. Buckle up for a slippery ride. Don't you love how your horse uses their poop as their opinion? My gelding is extremely tidy. He poops in one area, he pees in one area, and he has his food where he likes to eat in another area. And everything is copacetic until he is unhappy. Then he will let you know if the water bucket is too dirty, poop. He will let you know if he did not like his grain and he will poop in it. And he will even poop on his hay that he doesn't like. In my case, inside the porta grazer don't we love how our horses use their poop as their opinion (laughs) that was kelly thank you kelly i use my poop as my opinion too (laughs) kelly (laughs) thank you kelly (laughs) appreciate that well earlier in the year we had travel week and now the week dedicated to something we all deal with a lot we shovel it we study it we test it we move it we spread it we compost (laughs) it we throw it at each other as teenagers yep It's horse poop. All this week, we'll be discussing poop, how to make it healthier, how to move it, how to compost it, all the horse poop things. And we have guests that will be joining us from all aspects of the horse poop world. How is it going to work? Well, we'll have a couple of guests each day and a lot of random information you never wanted to know about poop, as well as some poop stories from our listeners, like you just heard. And never fear, we'll still have a question, first world problems and weird news and really bad ads at the end of the episodes this week. So, on today's Poop Week opener, we have the doctor from Poseidon Animal Health, who's going to answer a bunch of our questions about what horse poop should look like, when it looks bad, what you should do. She's going to kind of get us started on Horse Poop Week. And... Horses in History, we take a look at one of the biggest poop problems in history, and we also have some equestrian first world problems. Plus, before equestrian first world problems, a little later in the show, the big question of the weekend is, did Jamie embarrass me or not (laughs) at the show she was at over the weekend? Team HRN! I know you were super thrilled that we named our team Team HRN to represent the network. And um, we'll find out whether we embarrassed you or, you know, we carried on the tradition of awesomeness at the Horse Radio Network. I'm still a little nervous about this one. (laughs) So we'll we'll find out that later in the show. But first, we still have some Daily Winnies to do. One auditor birthday today, Alex Hamilton. Happy birthday to you. We hope you have a great day and a super congratulations. Get this to the U.S. team para team. They won all kinds of gold. They basically won the team gold and then they went on to win medals. All of them won medals in freestyle to the point where, get this, Jamie, the para equestrian medal table looks like this. The USA five gold, one silver, one bronze for a total of seven medals to lead the pack by far. So congratulations. It's the most medals, obviously, they've ever won. There were two triple gold medalists in there. Fiona Howard and Rebecca Hart had triple golds. So congratulations to all of them. Looking at this, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight countries, and all eight countries meddled in something, which is fantastic. And I mean, Germany and Great Britain, they they had six and seven themselves out of the Netherlands. I mean, they, everybody had a very strong showing, but Team USA with the gold, <laughs> baby. Woo-hoo! 
Congratulations. You know, the Hope Hand, we all know Hope, and I just wish Hope would be, have been here to see this. She was walking, watching from oh, above yeah. and so proud because she's the one that put this program together for 30 years, and, and it paid off. So, so Hope, good job. If you're hearing us today, which I'm sure you are, good job. And good job to the whole team. We're going to get one or two of them on here in the weeks to come. Sorry, dog running under my desk. <laughs> that dog out of here (laughs) need those wires or cords or anything it's fine is this my daily winnie yes okay well my daily winnie is all horse related but i will tell you we're going to talk about the show later on i will tell you that at the end of the day when everybody has finished their cross-country courses it was a derby so there was like show jumping and cross-country out all on the so everything except the boring part the, I, Chad was like, "This is your dot." Like, what? He's like, "That was it." He's like, "This is fantastic." <laughs> he didn't have to watch <laughs> no dressage. dressage. No show. It was like all there together. Just go warm up and go do your course, right? So we get the whole course done, and there's prizes at the end. And I'll, I'll tell you guys more about the course later and everything. But the prizes at the end were uh, everybody in this show is sitting in the office, and there's these like prize packs for team winners and all that kind of stuff. And we're all looking through them, like going, what, there's some bell boots, there's some like supplement products, there's candy, there's just like lots of just horsey swag, you know, swag. It's like whatever. But there's a giant and 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 remember, we start early and I don't eat before I ride. So it's at this point like one in the afternoon. And I am hungry and, and everybody's hungry. We're all the same. We're all the same human, right? So we're all sitting in there and there is a giant cookie in these prize packs. And all of us are just people cookie or a horse cookie. That was the question. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, your horse people, when you're like, you think this is for humans or horses and nobody knew, (laughs) but But you're willing to risk it. (laughs) I I was like, I go, I was like, I'll, I'll take it by. We're all like, well, we need, I mean, if if we don't eat what our horses eat, like, well, I mean, what are we doing? Like, let's go. So we all decided to just share it. But then it turns out I didn't win it. So I couldn't share, (laughs) but (laughs) But we were all like, how weird is that? Like, you're like, what kind of human sees a giant frosted cookie and like has to wonder, I wonder if that's for horses or humans. (laughs) God, it looked good, though. I was really hungry. Now I'm hungry again. Thanks. Well, I can't wait to hear more about it later in the show. So I thought we'd start Poop Week with some facts and figures about poop. Uh, I tell you what. I have done more research about poop than I ever thought I'd do in my lifetime in the past couple of weeks. I'm really uh, proud of you. You know... Some people study in school mm. to get their like masters and things like that. No, you studied more for this week. That's right. And I think you studied in college. I have a degree in poop after this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you need to send me a certificate with that on it, by the way. So oh, did you know that a thousand pound horse will average eight piles a day? Now, I kind of think my pony does more than eight, but... That seems low. Yeah, but apparently it is. Apparently some horses only do six. I want to know who the, where those horses are because I've never owned one. I think Nigel does 12 or 15. So if that's the case, then it's about 50 pounds of manure daily by your horse. And we all know that because we shovel it. Taking an average of three weeks, get this. So with 50 pounds daily, it takes an average of three weeks to produce its own weight and poop. So oh every God. three weeks, your horse is doing its own weight and poop. You could like take a little poop <laughs> sculpture and make them out Isn't of it. Isn't that incredible? Approximately, get this, nine tons of poop per year per horse. Nine oh, my God. Tons. That's four, 450,000 pounds over an average 25-year lifespan. You're making me feel like I'm a slave to manure. <laughs> That's so crazy. I hope somebody, please tell me if you are actually cleaning the stalls while listening to this this morning. We want to know. Well, you know, when I lived in Arizona, because we only had a couple acres and we had some grass and we'd irrigated horse property, we had to pick up every pile of poop that fell on the ground, wherever it was stalls or paddocks or anything like that. And you wonder why horse chicks are so strong. Yep. Good Lord, we have guns. <laughs> yep. After it swallowed. Nine tons a year. I lived there for 10 years. Yeah, you moved, what, almost 90, 90 tons. tons. 
And I had multiple horses. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. I'm hungry and tired now. Thanks. (laughs) After the food is swallowed by a horse, it enters the stomach where very little digestion actually takes place. In fact, the food material may spend as little as 15 minutes in the stomach before moving on. The stomach's primary role is to help liquefy the feed and to aid in the passage to the small intestine where the absorption of nutrients begins. The feed spends one to three hours in the small intestine where simple sugars and fat-soluble vitamins A, D, and E, and K, and all of those, are, are all digested and absorbed. And then next, it moves on to the large intestine where fermentation of fiber produces fatty acids, an important source of energy for your horse. After almost all the nutri- nu- nutrients have been extracted, the feed enters the small colon, a lot of colons in there, where the water is absorbed and fecal balls form, ready to be passed out. In total, it takes between 36 and 72 hours for a bite of food to be transformed into manure. I thought it was shorter than that, to be honest. I didn't think it was that long. I don't know how to feel about what you just told me. (laughs) Why? I I, I don't know. First of all, I don't know. I've never heard anybody pronounce intestines the way that you just did. So that kind of took me out of it. But the fact that I can feed my horse and literally 36 hours later, what I fed them is on the floor. Like, whoo. I guess it's normal function. It just you just put it so matter of fact. I <laughs> it's normal. It's the same way with people too. Although I don't think it takes us. And now they're long. gonna poop, and I'm gonna be like, "Is that that cookie that I gave you a day and a half ago?" <laughs> well, in just a minute, we're gonna have a doctor on that's gonna explain what to look for in your horse's poop and what's ma- what what's bad poop and what's good poop. So we're gonna do. And I thought that's the perfect way to start this week. Did you know, by the way, as a random fact, and he couldn't come on this week, but he's gonna come on later. Later on, there is a company that makes paper out of poop, horse poop, actual writing paper out of horse poop. That's the most fantastic thing. I I've tried ever heard. to get him on, but he couldn't. He wasn't available his way this week. But he's going to come on in the future because I got to learn how they do that. But in any case, why don't you talk a little bit about worm flooring? What, by the way, what do horses do on worm flooring? They poop. They poop. But it's better, right? It's better <clears throat> if they poop on worm flooring because it doesn't seep down in and it doesn't get into the cracks and crevices and eat the floor away. Yeah. One place we deal with poop is trailers and they seem to save it for the minute they walk in. I yep. don't know why that is. <laughs> and, and like I walked Ace to the trailer this weekend and he pooped and I was like, yes, my worm flooring is going to be intact because it's a new newer trailer to me. And he walks in and poops again. I'm like, how did you do that? Like... <laughs> I know. You, uh, and and, and Scooters is always sides. runny instantly when he walks into the trailer. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why you want to have the easy to clean worm flooring in your trailer. No more lifting heavy mats to clean under them. Just clean out the back and hose it down. And there's no more urine and water seeping under the mats to eat away your flooring. By the way, there was no accessible restroom at the horse show and I peed on the worm floor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> For humans <laughs> too. Didn't seep through. <laughs> TMI. Sorry, everybody. This whole week is going to be a lot of TMI. Yeah, I think so. Whatever. Worm flooring solves your problems. Slip resistant grip, extremely comfortable. Worm flooring systems, the perfect choice for your horse trailer and all over your horse property. We eliminate rubber mats. That's W-E-R-M. Visit Worm Flooring to find a dealer near you. I, I didn't tell you this, but later on in the week, longtime listeners will remember him. And I wanted to let you know that they're still in business. And Joseph from Equity is a sponsor for this week, and he's going to join us on Friday to catch us up. We haven't heard oh, from Joseph in years, but apparently still sending out shaking forks and flexing forks. So that's awesome. So we're going to hear from him later in the week, too. It's been a long time. I have a random poof fact for you. We're going to have these throughout the week, too. When oh, horse manure fantastic. burns, it generates more than half as much heat as charcoal and slightly less heat uh, than wood. So if you run out of wood this winter, I think you have to dry it first. Burn though. some poop. <laughs> I think, I think Chad dry. would love it if like I brought in a whole bunch of poop and put it in our fireplace, in our chimney. Yes, and, like, I just think, lit it. Well, and you need to I let mean, it dry. So why don't you do that right beside the house? I think that'd be Oh, that's too. a good idea. Yeah. I'll do like a little composting manure pond next to the house. That'd, well, be, that'd go over real well. And you know, it would dry out better if you spread it out in the yard. So it ha- gets sunlight. I think it would dry out quicker. Oh, you're so smart. I know. That'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how can I get Jamie divorced? Let's make it happen. 
Hey, by the way, if anybody does that at home, don't blame me. Write to Jennifer at horseradionetwork.com when you get divorced. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. So coming up next is our title sponsor for this week, Dr. Erin Roddy. She's head veterinarian of Poseidon Animal Health. Dr. Erin Roddy is a veterinarian with a passion for equine gut health, having spent over a decade working internationally in equine rehabilitation and nutrition. After founding a boutique re- rehabilitation center in Sydney, Australia, Erin's passion for gut health led her to Poseidon Animal Health, where she now works as Chief Veterinary Officer, focusing on research, product development, and educating horse owners and industry professionals. She's an avid show jumper here in Ocala, Florida. She doesn't live too far from me, actually. Oh, wow. She has five horses of her own, ranging from a 19-year-old warm blood to a six-year-old homebred warm blood. She's here today to help us dive deep into the importance of manure for equine health. Dr. Roddy, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Good. So tell us a little bit about Poseidon Animal Health. Yeah, so Poseidon Animal Health is a gut health supplement company. We were founded in 2017 in Sydney, Australia, and we have recently launched in the United States early in 2024. We also operate in New Zealand, the United Arab Emirates, and Hong Kong. Well, if you're ever looking for a radio show to go to Sydney to do a live broadcast, we would be happy to do that for you. Oh, that could be very fun. Yes. That could be very, very yes. cool. You wouldn't be able to drive there, but we'll, <laughs> we'll put you on a plane, <laughs> okay. and, and we could probably do a long, long segment on the plane, because yes. it's a long flight. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie yeah, and I, we've be, always wanted to go to Australia and New Zealand, so we're, we're, oh, we're there. Are <laughs> super beautiful, super, super beautiful country. I'm, I'm happy to be back in the States, but I did really love living in Australia. I bet. And now you're back in Ocala. You're actually not too far from me. And I mentioned that you were a show jumper here in Ocala. Yep, Perfect place right. to be. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. The horse capital of the world. And it. I have never lived in a place where it is so common to see hay in the back of every pickup truck in every parking lot. <laughs> and, so you know you're in a horsey place then. And breeches in every grocery store. Every grocery oh, store. every grocery store. Yep. And the big bags of carrots. Always right. got to get the big that's bags right. of carrots. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So speaking of the carrots, that's food for horses, and we all know what happens. I just discussed how it takes uh, it takes 36 to 72 hours for it to come out the other end. And so today we're going to talk about poop as part of Poop Week. And by the way, thank you for, for becoming title sponsor for Poop Week. We have four days of this, listeners. You're going to love it. So today you're going to guide us through why manure is so important, what we, we should be paying attention to, all those things. Yeah, absolutely. I I love poop. I couldn't be more excited to be involved with Poop Week. And I think poop is one of those things in horses that doesn't get the attention it deserves. So I think it's awesome that you guys are are getting your listeners to think about poop because it's it's the most important thing. You know what, though? We do think about poop every day when we shovel it. It's just that we're not, we're usually thinking about something else at the same time and not studying it like we should. So, so, (laughs) (laughs) so why is manure so important? You know, I mean, manure is really the best indication of the horse's health in real time. You know, and like you said, everybody has to deal with it. So whether you're just thinking about it as how am I going to deal with it, how am I going to get rid of it safely and as efficiently as possible, or you're really looking at it as that message from the insides, which I think it is. It ties all horse people of all disciplines, all breeds, all walks of life. It ties us together. And People, you know, we love to talk about looking at the horse's weight, looking at their coat, looking at the quality of their hooves, and that definitely tells us about their health. But that can take weeks or months where the manure is telling you every four to six hours, is my horse healthy? Are they doing well on the diet that I'm feeding them? How is their hindgut doing? So it really is such an important part of indicating your horse's health. And so, all right, you talk about paying attention to the horse's poop. What, what mm. am I looking for? You know, I, we can tell if it, the horse has diarrhea, but let's not go there yet. What am yeah, I? No, <laughs> we get a little early for yeah. diarrhea. What, what should we be paying attention to? What are we looking for? Yeah, you know, I like to say that the horse's personality is in their poop, which which sounds a bit gross. <laughs> oh my really God, is. put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the greatest sentence ever uttered. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need to take. We need to cut that one out. Make a timestamp note of that one. <laughs> so we could do. We could do some shirts. The horse's personality is in their poop, but you know you can tell honestly so much about your horse. They they all have a schedule which is normal for them. They have an appearance and consistency that consistency in their manure that is normal for them, and that's really helpful in determining how their GI tract is working and how they're processing the diet that you're feeding them, whether it agrees with them or it doesn't. And it's a really good early indicator when something isn't right. So, you know, the reason I say that thing about personality is because horses are prey animals. So part of their genetic and evolutionary makeup is being stoic and hiding weakness from predators. So they internalize stress, they internalize anxiety, but they can't control their manure. So what comes out is a very honest expression of what's going on inside so we can see early signs of stress, of illness or disease just by looking at the manure and they give it for free and they give it, you know, every four to six hours, hopefully. So if you start really paying attention to every horse's normal schedule, the normal consistency and, you know, the, the smell and, and the color, those kind of things, then you can really start to know what isn't normal for your horse. And that's a really good sign of when things have gone awry. So what? A, so if I was to take, if you were to take like the three most important things to know about your horse's manure, what are we, what are we talking about? Yeah, perfect. So number one, frequency. Horses should pass a pile of manure every four to six hours. And that can change a little bit depending on the horse and their diet and their circumstances, but, but that's pretty normal. And then you want to know, does your horse do that? Most people at clean stalls, they can tell you for each horse in the stall how many piles they'll normally find. And also, you know, where those piles would be. Some horses are slobs, some horses are really tidy. But I think if you've, if you've cleaned many stalls or paddocks in your time, you can normally say, you know, red's going to have six piles and lady's going to have five and, and black down the end, he might only have four. But if suddenly there's an increase or decrease in that number, that can be a really early sign of a problem. So frequency, number one. Number two is quality. So I'm sure most people will think that manure doesn't have much quality at all, but, but it should. How it looks and how it smells gives us a really good indication of the health of the horse's GI tract, and particularly that hind gut, which, you know, as some of your listeners might know, is actually a really hard thing to assess. We're really good at assessing the horse's stomach now. We don't have a lot of tools to assess the hind gut, but we do have manure, and that tells you a lot about what's going on in your hind gut. You know, there's a complicated, well, it's not that complicated, but there's a scoring system called the manure scoring system, which is like the body con- body condition really? scoring system. Yeah, one to six, you can score your horse's manure. <laughs> I won't get into all the intricacies of it, but, but if, especially if you have a horse that you are struggling with manure that doesn't have good quality, so maybe it smells bad, maybe it's a funny color, maybe it's not a great consistency, I would look into learning that manure scoring system. It'll help you discuss with your vet and your nutritionist, and then you can really assess, you know, objectively the changes that are happening rather than going, oh, maybe it's a little more green or a little less green. It actually gives us a number system, which is really helpful to talk about. Well, I mean, and the then, categories then, like the, you don't have to go through them all, but I'm interested to know what the categories are for that. Yeah. So, so one to two, which is the lowest, that's where we're really talking about diarrhea. So that's poop that doesn't stack at all. You know, that is liquid paint the walls kind of stuff. Okay. Um, your normals are sort of four to five. So that should be a well-formed ball. And then six, those are balls, but they're starting to get really hard and dry. And we don't want our manure to be hard and dry. So if you're at any extreme of that spectrum, whether it's a one or a six, then we have some pretty serious problems going on. If your horse is in that normal four to five range, then then you're doing a pretty good job with their diet and their gut is doing a pretty good job processing what they're being fed. So okay. certainly if you're at the extremes, we need to really look at what we're doing. And if we're in the normal range, then you're doing a pretty good job. Next t-shirt idea, Glenn. I like my poop four to five. <laughs> <laughs> I, poop four to five. I do it. And, and almost everybody does because remember that horses eat forage. So their poop should be, you know, not too offensive. It shouldn't smell too bad. It's certainly not, you know, like the small animal carnivore poop that we have to deal with in dogs and cats. It, it really shouldn't bother you too much. So, so when it is bothering you, whether it's the smell or the consistency, it's also bothering your horse. That's, that's showing that they're not well. My last, my last point was consistency. And that is, we talked a little bit, but the sort of 
appearance and also the texture of the poo. So if we start to see those changes in texture, color, or smell, that's an early sign that our hind gut health is changing. And it can be a direct correlation to how well your horse is digesting their diet and the status of their immune system. I don't know if you guys know this, but 70 to 80% of the horse's immune system is actually located in their GI tract. So as soon as you start to have a little problem in the health of the hind gut, you see things like leaky gut syndrome, diarrhea, free fecal water syndrome, and that can be an indication of immune dysfunction. And it can lead to a whole host of other health issues like allergies, skin problems, even laminitis and systemic infection. So the poop, the hind gut, the manure, all that stuff is actually related to the entire horse's health. And that's why it's so important to really get down and dirty and, and well-versed in your horse's poop and, and how it changes. We like to see those nice, well-formed balls, brownish green in color, and it should be fairly odorless. Like I said, it really shouldn't bother you. When, when you start seeing those, those scores of one and two, diarrhea that doesn't stack or manure that's really smelly or normal form manure, but that's accompanied by free fluid, those are really good signs that something is amiss in the GI tract. And I, well, I, know, I asked the listener for questions for Poop Week, and, and one of the most common ones, oh, yeah, obviously, was diarrhea, right? That's the, yes. that's the yes. one we get the most often. I know there's multiple causes for diarrhea, so it's not just one thing. I wanted to get into a little bit, though, about digestive HP, which is one of your products. Tell us what that does to help with all of the digestive part. Yeah, so Digestive HP is our daily complete gut health supplement. So that's designed to be fed to horses every day, ideally twice a day. And what we've done is we've really scoured all the available scientific research and also all the other products on the market. And we've seen what active ingredients are available that are effective in the horse. And we've put them together to make a complete gut health supplement. So what we're trying to do is improve the quality and efficiency of how the gut works so that the horse can digest and absorb and process their nutrients better and also produce better formed manure. You know, I could go on and on about how we've changed the modern sport horse and how we're really kind of feeding and housing these guys to suit what's convenient for humans and not necessarily what's best for the horses. And sometimes that's because of convenience and sometimes that's because of what's available, how, how the horse is housed, what feed is available. But we've produced this supplement to sort of fill those gaps between how the horse should be fed and how they should be kept and, and what's actually happening. So we're, we're really just supporting that entire GI tract with those active ingredients at effective levels to improve their feed conversion, improve manure quality, and, and help support that immune system, which is located in that GI tract. And this you order directly from you, by the way, it comes in like 10, what, 20 pound and 40 pound? A 10 pound bag and a 40 pound bucket. Okay. So yeah, you can order directly from our website, so PoseidonAnimalHealth.com, or we are available in lots of retailers now. And if you would like to see us in our retailer, we'd love you to go in and tell them that you'd like to buy digestive HP from them because we would ideally like to save on the shipping for our customers. So the more retailers we can get into, the less the less shipping there is. But yeah, PoseidonAnimalHealth.com is our website and you can order directly from us. And yep, there's the 10-pound bags and that lasts your normal size horse about four to six weeks. Or you can get the 40-pound bucket if you've got multiple horses. That makes it a little bit more convenient. Got it. And now when we travel, my wife's horse, Nigel, gets stressed out in the trailer. My horse loves it. I mean, he my he jumps on the trailer, but Nigel, not yeah, so he's much. Smart, because he knows that, that a hundred years ago he would have been pulling a cart. Yeah, because all these humans have worked it out. He's still now pulling a cart. Me along. Yeah, yeah. So you also <laughs> offer stress horse. paste. Would that be more for Nigel and it, him when he travels? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we have found, and there's a lot of research showing that as soon as we start traveling horses and and we change their environment we do cause them stress. And it actually happens really rapidly how quickly the microbiome changes in response to that stress. And that's one of the reasons you'll often see changes in manure and changes in appetite when you start traveling horses or competing them. So we created stress paste, which is a concentrated nutritional formula. It's got a lot of the good stuff that's in our HP. And then it's also got antioxidants and vitamins and minerals to support horses in those times of stress. Super convenient paste keep in your tack trunk. You can whack it in their mouth anytime you're traveling or, or something's changing. Maybe they've got a herd buddy that's going. Maybe you're getting a change of hay that can really wreak havoc on the microbiome. So just those extra times of stress, we created the pace to give them the extra bit of support and protection. 
do you give it to them an hour ahead of getting in the trailer? What do you do? Yeah, so I usually give it to them anywhere between 30 to 90 minutes before a stressful event. So, so yeah, an hour before the trailer is perfect. If I'm going to do a long trip, I'll actually do a night before travel, a tube, and then a tube the morning that we start traveling. And I'll actually keep them on a half a tube for the duration of the trip, whether that's a long truck ride or that's a competition or, you know, I have a lot of clients that do endurance and so they actually compete their horses for several days. So we start with that loading dose, a tube the night before, a tube the morning of, and then we keep them on a half a tube twice a day for the duration of whatever the stressful event's going to be. That might even be weaning. When I wean my mares and foals, I use stress face. Anytime if, if you've sold a horse or bought a horse and they're coming to a new barn or a new trainer, anytime you're changing their diet and their environment, that that's really not what the microbiome is designed to deal with. So we need to give it a little bit of extra help. Jamie, it sounds like you need a 85 pack for your place. I'm just now like I'm searching for it online. This is insane. I have to have this. It oh, does come in. Is it, that is honestly a magic formula. It does so many things and it's really, the horses love it. It's really easy to use. And I just get, I never get tired of getting the feedback, but all day long I get messages and calls of, of how it's a miracle product for manure issues, for appetite issues, hydration issues. And, you know, it's not a calming pace. We don't really believe in trying to sedate horses for competition, but so many of the behavior problems that we see when horses are stressed is actually because of GI pain. I mean, you know yourself, if you're bloated or, or you've got a stomach ulcer, you don't feel well, your mood is not going to be great. You're certainly not going to perform to your best. And so, so much of the behavior issues we tend to see when horses are stressed is actually that GI pain. So if we solve that GI pain problem, we do get horses that perform more calmly and are more focused, but without trying to sedate them. Jen, Jamie trains off the track thoroughbreds for a rescue out in Oklahoma. So, you know, she's oh, uh, how cool. she's retraining, but we've done a couple hundred now. We've adopted out to our listeners. And I've done 180 now. Isn't that crazy? That is oh, crazy. wow. That is so cool. I, I'm a big fan of thoroughbreds. Some of my very best jumpers have actually been off the track thoroughbreds, and I do love them. And, you know, for our off the trackers in particular, the microbiome that they come off the track with can be so, so damaged. And you can absolutely, as you know, you can help them get better through diet and through exercise and through good environment, but it takes a long time where we find when we use these active ingredients like the stress paste and the HP, we can just jumpstart that so much quicker. Well, and I'd like what it says on here, sorry to interrupt, was it, no, it, go it, for it causes a healthy appetite. And that's a big thing that a lot of these racehorses, so they come off the track and they go to the rescue and they get their downtime and then they come to me for training. But like, that's a whole nother shipping. They have to ship an hour to me. And a lot of times they just don't have an appetite. And I always go, okay, do you have ulcers? Do you like, what's going on in your gut? And so this would be a great way to kind of like put it in there and and jumpstart it. Exactly. And, and what that is, is that, you know, the microbiome and and it's so funny because there's things we can extrapolate from humans to horses. And I think there's things that we can't, but the bacteria, the way the bacteria work, we can. So your microbiome and your horse's microbiome gets trained to a certain diet. So if you eat a lot of sugar, if you have a sugar craving, that is your bacteria screaming for sugar. Those of us that cannot go without our coffee, that is our body being addicted to the coffee and it screams for it. So racehorses get trained to the diet that they get fed off the track. So it's not that they don't have an appetite, but when they come off the track and they go to be retrained or rehomed, they're generally not getting fed the same thing. And so their body is screaming for what they've always been fed, not the beautiful, probably more correct diet that you're actually presenting to them. Their bacteria don't know how to eat that. They don't know how to process it. So we have to actually improve the quality of the microbiome and give them those really good B vitamins and coat their stomach, which is what the stress paste does, to allow them to adjust to the new diet, which is most of the time better, but it's just different for them. It's not what they're used to. So we have to just help them. And it's stressful. You know, you change handlers, you change your housing, you change water. I mean, you know, when you go on a trip yourself, how stressful it is. And you're not a horse. They didn't get to choose where they were going. So everything has changed and their body is just not really used to dealing with that kind of change. So if you can if you can coat the stomach like we do and you can help support the bacteria, you can give them those good antioxidants and the B, the B vitamins you really just jumpstart that horse's ability to deal with their new stage in their life. 
Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's PoseidonAnimalHealth.com, where you can find both of those products. And Dr. Roddy has done some recordings for us that are very short. They're like a minute. And we're going to be playing those throughout the week to talk about fecal water syndrome and some of the other things that we haven't talked about here today. So we'll be playing those later on in the week as well. And thank you for doing that, too. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. And, you know, I want to leave everybody with a little bit of an idea that, you know, your manure is sort of your horse's report card. You don't have to wait to the end of the semester to see if something's <laughs> off. Every few hours, they hand you a pile. They tell you how they're feeling. So pay attention to it. Think they about hand you it. a pile. <laughs> they hand you a pile. And that's, that's how they're doing. And, and you can really learn so much about your horse and their diet and their health just by paying attention to their manure. So good for you guys for bringing that to the fore. Okay, we need a Poop Week shirts next year. We definitely have I to mean, have shirts next God. year. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like poop I can week. just imagine the, the graphic you can have of a horse handing you a pile of its poop. Like, that's a whole other shirt. Good Lord, we are going to have, like... Coming home going, this is how I'm doing. Am I, am I getting a prize or am I grounded? And can you, you send are. Jamie about 100 tubes of the stress paste? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jamie, you need, you need some stress paste in your life. You will not know yourself as stress paste. I might have to have some myself. So <laughs> we'll work on that. Dr. Absolutely. Roddy, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great week. Hi, Glenn. This is Margaret from Southern Vermont. I just wanted to share my story for poop week. Not only do I have to deal with dog poop and horse poop on a daily basis, but I've also made it a bit of a career. I manage a large wastewater facility <laughs> and multiple small wastewater and water systems in Southern Vermont. And I deal with it on a daily basis. It's been a great career. It's really actually very fascinating. And I hope to retire from it someday. But for now, <laughs> this is what I do. I've kind of earned the nickname, the Poop Queen of Vermont, because not only do I do it as a living, I'm also president of the Vermont Rural Water Association. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we deal with training for all the water and wastewater operators, as well as technical assistance. So I guess you can say poop is in my blood. <laughs> Thanks for recognizing all of us who deal with poop on a daily basis. Have a great one. Bye. God, we have I listeners like that do everything. <laughs> we need to talk to the veterinarian that was just on and get her a string of antibiotics. If she's got poop in her blood, you need to... The poop queen of Vermont, baby. Oh, my God. That's so fantastic. I love how casual she was saying all that, too. Like, eh, like, you know. Like, yeah. I do this for a living for 30 years. I've been in the poop world. And it's still fascinating, apparently. So there you go. That's you never know what our listeners do for a living. We have it all. Hey, you know what else listeners did? Is they called in and gave us messages in other languages. And I think they all say, welcome back or welcome to Poop Week. Or you don't know. <laughs> or I don't know what they say, actually. But here's one of them. Benvenuti alla settimana della cacca. <laughs> I think that's Italian. I don't know what it is. That's Italian. <laughs> Bienvenuti da, 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 alla caca. That's Ashley, by the way. And Ashley says hi to everybody. She's having fun at home with the kid, and she'll be back in a few weeks. So, Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Caca is definitely poop in Italian. <laughs> uh, now, I put together for you a Horses in History. I figured we'd start the week with one of these two. And... Well, before we get to that, I got to tell everybody about Cosequenza. Don't forget. Okay. So, so when, we'll talk about Cosequin, and then we'll get to horses in history. When it comes to equine health, Cosequin Joint Health Supplement didn't just enter the arena. They built it. World-renowned riders like, have you heard of him? Philip Dutton. Will Coleman, Julie Goodnight, they all trust Cosequin for their horses. The high-quality, scientifically researched ingredients found in Cosequin products range to support joint, digestive, hoof, and immune health and the areas most impacted by performance horses. Top riders give their horses the best, and that's why when performance matters, they choose Cosequin. With over 30 years behind the Cosequin name, you can rely on Cosequin products for when performance matters. To learn more, visit Cosequin.com. The year was 1894, and New York City was at the height of its golden age. Skyscrapers were rising, Ellis Island was welcoming new waves of immigrants, and the streets bustled with energy. But beneath the glamour of the thriving metropolis, a crisis was mounting, one that threatened the very fabric of the city. It wasn't a financial crash or a political scandal. It was poop. 
The sheer number of horses in New York had become a logistical nightmare. The city relied on them for almost every facet of daily life. They pulled streetcars, delivered goods, transported people, and powered the economy. But with over 100,000 horses trotting through the streets daily, the city was drowning in manure. An estimated 2.5 million pounds of it produced every single day. The manure piled high along curbs, spilling into streets and alleys. Every step through the city came with the pungent odor of decay. In some neighborhoods, mountains of horse droppings reached heights up to six feet, blocking sidewalks and creating breeding grounds for disease. Flies swarmed these festering heaps, spreading typhoid and other deadly diseases. The entire city was choking on its own success. Vacant lots across New York City became piled high with manure, sometimes rising up to 60 feet. As well, there are flyborne diseases that were very harmful to horses. It is estimated there were over 15,000 horses that died from horse distemper or swelling of the horse until death. One of the distinctive features of the homes in New York City is the elevated staircases to the houses. Well, they were born in order to avoid the seas of manure. William Parsons, a sanitation worker, knew the crisis firsthand. Each day, he and his fellow street cleaners worked to shovel away as much of the waste as they could, but it was a huge task. The manure kept coming faster than they could remove it. Rats thrived in the filth, scurrying between the wheels of carriages and nipping at the hems of women's dresses. The New York newspapers called it the Great Manure Crisis. One editorial writer described the streets as a sea of filth in which even the hardiest souls weighed weight steep. City officials met to discuss solutions, but nothing seemed viable. Piling the manure in empty lots or shipping it out to sea was a temporary fix at best. The city was growing faster than its infrastructure could handle, and people were starting to worry. What will become of us in five years, Parsons heard a shopkeeper mutter as he passed by. Will we drown in horse droppings? At the heart of the crisis was the sheer dependence on horses. With every improvement to the city's transit systems, more streetcars, more omnibuses, came more horses. And with more horses came more manure. There was no end in sight. In an attempt to mitigate the disaster, the city employed teams of street cleaners who worked around the clock. Parsons was one of the best, known for his tireless dedication. But even he knew they were fighting a losing battle. One humid August morning, after a long shift shoveling muck, he wiped sweat from his brow and leaned against his cart. We need something else, he mumbled, watching another line of carriages clatter past, leaving a fresh trail of filth in their wake. But what? Horses had been the backbone of the city for centuries. They were the lifeblood of commerce and transportation. Was there an alternative? Elsewhere in the city, a visionary engineer named Robert Sweeney was having similar thoughts. Unlike Parsons, Sweeney was not burdened by the daily grind of waste removal, but he understood the scale of the problem. He had long been fascinated by the burgeoning technology of electric-powered streetcars and motor vehicles, and he wondered if this could be the key to saving New York. At a city council meeting later that month, Sweeney presented his bold idea, electrification. He argued that the time had come to move beyond the horse and embrace a cleaner, more efficient technology. He proposed an expansion of electric streetcars and the introduction of the horseless carriage, which was just beginning to catch attention in Europe. His idea was met with skepticism. County members scoffed at the notion that these unproven machines could replace the horse, the very symbol of industry and reliability. Yet Sweeney pressed on, armed with statistics, and showed how much money the city could save by reducing its dependence upon horses, not to mention the health benefits of cleaner streets. Gentlemen, he said, if we continue as we are, this city will become uninhabitable. We need to look at the future or we'll be buried in our own waste. The public, too, was slow to embrace the concept of motor vehicles, but as the manure crisis worsened, desperation grew. Newspapers began to publish editorials calling for modern solutions. The streets became so hazardous that pedestrians were forced to walk in zigzag patterns, avoiding piles of manure and dodging the spray from passing horses. The smell became unbearable during the summer heat, and outbreaks of typhoid fever surged. Then in 1898, just as the crisis seemed unmanageable, a breakthrough came. The introduction of the electric streetcar system. The first lines were built, and over time, horses were replaced by the humming, sleek new vehicles. By 1900, motor cars, still a rarity but growing in popularity, began to replace carriages for personal transportation. Slowly but surely, the dependence on horses began to wane. 
Parsons, now approaching the end of his career, marveled at the changes happening in his city. He could hardly believe it when the streets began to clear. The once unthinkable dream of a nor free New York was becoming a reality. With the expansion of electric streetcars and the arrival of motor cars, the mountains of Manor began to shrink. By 1912, the crisis that once seemed destined to swallow the city had abated. The automobile industry, led by innovators like Henry Ford, was on the rise, and horse-drawn carriages were fast becoming relics of the past. New York had survived the filth crisis, thanks to technology and determination of forward-thinking individuals like Sweeney. As the streets cleared and the air grew cleaner, Parsons reflected on his years of hard work. The poop crisis of 1894 had become one of the greatest challenges New York had ever faced, but it also spurred innovations that would define the 20th century. The city had been saved, not by shovels, but by the power of innovation. And as New York roared into the future, it left behind the stench of the past. There's more talk than ever about the importance of probiotics and equine health, but not all probiotics are created equal. A new Purina Systemic Supplement remains live and active after the pelleting process and throughout the digestive system, making it all the way to the hind gut. Systemic was designed to support normal recovery after exercise and occasional gastrointestinal stress. Whether you're using a probiotic now or not, it's time to use a live and active supplement from a name you can trust, the new Purina Systemic Probiotic. So the last poop item of the day before we hear about Jamie's weekend representing Team HRN at her show with listener Patty is that chariot racing was one of the national pastimes of ancient Rome. Betting on races was a huge deal. Betters of races would go to great lengths to learn any small piece of information they could. Does that sound familiar? Like today. Uh, <laughs> one favorite tactic apparently was looting the stables for manure. The manure left by the chariot horses could tell better which horses were healthy, well-fed, and which ones were not. Apparently they had a Dr. Roddy there too. And apparently it was such a valuable predictor that many historians believe that Rome actually had a thriving black market in chariot racing horse poop. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> That's your weird horse poop fact to end the day. All right. So you went to a show. Tell us about it. I did. I went to this derby. Now, it's a there's a facility. It's not too far from here. It's a couple of miles. And they used to have big horse trials. But as soon as I moved here, they quit doing that. It's super fun. So they now just host like local shows and they had a, a derby over the weekend and what that was it was a cross-country course with show jumps and cross-country jumps but my horse five years old has never actually jumped a cross-country jump or been on a cross-country course i have some logs in my pasture glen and this is fun I would, I've jumped him several times over it and he lands and bucks and tries to run back to the barn. So I'm like, I'm not going to jump him at my house until he gets like, I thought maybe it would be good for him to go somewhere else where he didn't have the distraction of his, his friends, you know, and being on the pasture. So they had a schooling on Saturday and I went and had a riding lesson and, and Patty, who was my also team HRN, she was in the lesson as well. And we just for two hours rode this cross country course and just popped over everything in just little stuff. And I think that the, one of the biggest challenges to me with taking a, a new young horse somewhere is how they're going to behave when you get them out of the trailer and they're somewhere new. I think that's well, with the, all the other this, horses around screaming and running and well, carrying yeah. on and people. And, and there's horses off in the distance galloping cross country mm. and you're on this young horse and, and it, it can be very daunting. I mean, I've been that girl, like the horse that's rearing and spinning and screaming and all that. Like I've been that girl. So, I think that was a concern of mine um, with Ace because I, I probably have from Jet, for those who remember Jet, I have a lot of post-traumatic stress from that horse. So I was like, well, I'm just going to – I took him with Patty's horse, who's a nice, calm gelding, and we just – I just kept him around some nice – nice geldings. And he was so good. He went out on the course and we, and he, I mean, he was head up ears forward the whole time, like, like a giraffe looking at everything, but he kept his composure and we were able to jump all these little, I mean, the 
they're like six inches. I was like a telephone pole on the ground for the most part is the height we yeah, did. But he was clearing them by about a foot. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and the person that was teaching me the lesson was like, just jump some bigger stuff. And I was like, no, no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not in a hurry. Like this is my horse and I'm not in a hurry and he's five years old. And I just, I, until he's looking for the next object, I don't want to in, it's to make things too big. You know what I mean? Like I want him to understand the job first. And so by the end of the day, we did jump a couple bigger, like tiny, bigger things, you know, two telephone poles. Um, so, but he did all of that. We went through the water, we galloped through the water. It was so fun. I was, I, he, he really thought that, that we were going in the pond, you know, cause we have a pond here and he swims in it all the time. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, this is not a swimming pond. This is just a walkthrough pond. And so we got trotted and cantered through the water. I just couldn't have been prouder of him and more pleased with how he did. And he kept his composure. Now, I will say after, you know, about an hour and a half, he started to get a little overconfident and you, <laughs> and then he was like getting a little tired and getting a little sassy. And the last probably, you know, 10 jumps in between jumps, he would just like kind of just the buck and fart and all that. But I was like, but just we're almost done. We're almost done. Keep it calm. Um, and then, so yesterday morning we went on, so it was two hours on Saturday. I'm exhausted. And then the next ride is, you know, seven minutes. So went out there and did the course and I, I, he didn't see anything that we were jumping until he was seven inches from it. Cause his <laughs> head was straight up in the air. I couldn't get this horse to gallop. He just tense trotted the whole dang thing, <laughs> head up looking around. What is everybody doing? And of course, like Chad and Lucas, and I had a crowd, Glenn, Chad and <laughs> Lucas people. and Barrett and his girlfriend and Ginger and Brooklyn, everybody came and there was like, and then they're just like in this mass in the field. I'm like, you guys, these are six inches tall. Why are you here? <laughs> but then at some point I'm coming up to like jump number four. And I was like, you're in the way. <laughs> My child is just like walking out on the cross country course. Not one person say, Hey, can you move? I had to tell my own child to move out of the way. Fortunately, we weren't galloping. We're just tense trotting, <laughs> like giraffe trotting with the nose straight up in the air. But again, he jumped everything and I was concerned he was going to just plow through the cross rails on the course. Cause the, our little stadium jumps were just cross rails. And he jumped all of those and got through the whole dang thing. Now there was one point that, the water jump was kind of way off to the right. And at my level, you didn't have to go through the water. But I remember my old coach saying, never pass up the opportunity to school water. So we're on the course. I don't know what the time is. I haven't, I don't have a watch on. I, so I just veered off to the right and went and played around in the pond for a good 30 seconds and came back out. And I mean, not that I had to, and I was the jump judges, but I'm like, I'm just take, take him through the water because I can, you know. And so I take him around and finish the whole course. Get all the way done through the finish flags. We're good. Do you know how many seconds late I was, Glenn? 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. But it's okay. It was all about just getting him the experience. And so I'm just really pleased with how, how he did and how he handled the whole thing. And I want to thank Patty. She was such a, a well, good apparently support. Apparently she did well. She got a blue ribbon. I, I've competed against her twice and she beats me every time. <laughs> so far, I'm over two. Patty, I'm coming for you, girl. Uh, the first horse trial, she got first, I got second. Now I, she got first, I got third. I'm moving down in the world. Dang. <laughs> Get it together. Hey, well, but, congratulations. And thank you for not embarrassing Horse Radio Network. We really appreciate it. Actually, the pictures look fantastic. They look good. It was such a beautiful morning. It's funny. It was like the first like cool morning we've had. And I was like, Oh, no. It's the <laughs> yeah. first cool morning. This yeah. is how I die. For baby event horses. That's great. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, now, but I will tell you mm. that there's a piece of equipment, that Correct Connect neck strap that I use. Oh, yeah. I saw it on there. I will never <laughs> ride without one of those again. Oh, my God. If you don't have one of those, you're crazy. This you is your awful. baby handle. <laughs> it's my handle. And it keeps you from punching them in the mouth. But it also just gives you a little bit of a little... Like when he would land and bug, I'd just grab that strap and okay, sit back. <laughs> so I, I think, I think a lot of people after seeing what, seeing what I had are going to invest in it. Cause y'all crazy. If you don't have one, I will never ride with that one again. Okay. Now can we just one other thing before we get to a question first world problems what? is what do you pick on me about with my pony the most? 
Oh, I know. I what know. do you pick on now for the listeners? What do you pick on about my pony the most? I my little hackney sweet pony named Scooter. He's fat. And what do we look at in these pictures with Ace here? I know. He's, he's a little so... chunky. I'm surprised he's... he lasted that long. <laughs> like he looks, I get him and my Andalusian in the field confused. I'm like, which one is it? Because they're both have their big round bellies. But I will tell what you. What kind of size girth are you using on that thing? Oh my God. I don't know, but it's not fitting anymore. And he, it, we just have so much great grass right now. And my thought process is this. I'm not going to cut feedback on a thoroughbred heading into winter. So I'm like, you know what, buddy? Live your fat life. You got it. No You're more on picking it. on my pony ever again. Because oh, right now, my coming. pony's thinner than your horse. God, he is. Hey, I was walking around and somebody was like, what breed is he? And I'm like, he's a thoroughbred. They're like, really? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it does look more like a fat warm blood. I can't believe you noticed Well, that. the one I really noticed where it was really noticeable, I'm looking at your pictures, and there's a picture from behind of his jumping a red log. And that's the one where I went, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you knew I was going to say something. <laughs> I didn't, but I will tell you that so dear sweet Anna, my foreign exchange student is like, she like walked him around. She was there the whole time. She, she's like, this is better than TV. They're <laughs> <laughs> comment. And she's That's walking funny. him around. And so like the first day goes and everybody's doing their lesson and stuff. And she comes up to me at the end of the day. And she's like, do you know, not one person said that he was pretty. I told everybody their horse was pretty and not one person (laughs) said that he was pretty. And I was like, well, I'll tell you why it's because he's the prettiest and everybody's jealous of how pretty he is. And so next morning she was like, you're right. I mean, obviously that's how we like, we're like, he's the prettiest, obviously. So people just aren't going to compliment how pretty he is because he's so pretty. It's like, duh, obviously he's so pretty because he's like so pretty. And then first thing in the morning, because that day morning, this lady pulls up next to us. She gets out her trailer and Anna's holding Ace and that lady looks over. Oh my God, he's so pretty. She's like, Jenny, nobody said he's pretty. <laughs> She was like offended that nobody <laughs> said how pretty he was. <laughs> I wouldn't call but, him pretty. I'd call him handsome, though. He's a handsome dude. You just called him fat. Shut up. You get well, nothing. You can be fat and handsome <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. It was great. It was great. She My was pony's fat and life. handsome at the same time. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a minute. Now he's your pony is not handsome. He is stinking cute. He's so. just cute. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That really is true. <laughs> All right, let's do some of this. It's time for the weekly look at your equestrian first world problems. This ought to be good. Yeah. Uh, I remember it takes me a second to transition because I have to put on glasses now because oh, I'm right. I'm old. Yeah. So these are equestrian first world problems. These are submitted by our listeners, our auditors, actually. On Sunday, I will go on the auditor Facebook page and put up a post and ask, what is the sad thing you're having to deal with right now? And people will share. And so if you want to participate in this, you have to become an auditor. So if you want to do that, Glenn, tell them how. Just go to horseradionetwork.com, scroll down the uh, side of the page there, and you'll see an auditor banner and click it. Then for a little as $3 a month, you can join the party too. Get to do like all the submissions today. We're from auditors. We just, we have a lot of fun with the auditors. We did a special little taste testing last week for the auditors. So you do get a lot of extra stuff. A lot of extra content, post-show prizes, all that kind of stuff. All right, so... We're going to start with Jennifer because she said, I had another life-changing clinic this weekend, but I have to go back to work tomorrow when all I want to do is keep spending time with my horses. I need to win the lottery, but I don't play the lottery. (laughs) But then I love this one from Charlotte, who also commented underneath it. It is a first world problem that I need to play the lottery to even have a chance of winning the lottery. But it's an equestrian first world problem that I don't have the extra money to play the lottery. (laughs) I thought the two together were fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty good. Carrie, I feel you on this one. She says, my horse's forelock braid look ridiculous at our show last weekend because he has like four hairs in his forelock. (laughs) Yeah, Scooter has no forelock right now. He rubs it out. Somebody told me to go. I've never tried it to go to like 
go to Walmart and go to like the sister hair care section yeah. and you can find some gross stuff. Somebody try that and let me know how it goes. TJ says, I learned today that I'm sitting to the, Oh, this is in the same vein as TMI. Okay. You ready? Yep. I learned today that I'm sitting too far back in my Western saddle and my crotch is sore. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> Phyllis, this is so sad. She said, I just downloaded a tracking app and halfway through my ride, I bumped it and turned it off. Yeah, I do that all the time riding my bike. <laughs> I do that all the time. Are you serious? Yeah, I'll get home and go, I, I rode more than one mile. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, th- we've been following the saga of Tara trying to get her new property. And she said, we finally sold our place and bought the new one going from 10 to 20 acres. But now we have to actually move. <laughs> Tara and I were talking all weekend about who's going to get moved in first, and we're still not sure. <laughs> so. It's like a race. <laughs> Glenn told me I didn't have time to do all of them, so I'm going to skip through them here. Allison said, I board my horse at my friend's house so we can ride together. It's been fabulous. But she's going on a two-week vacation, and now I have to ride my horse and her horse for two weeks. <laughs> so first world. We're yes. such a-holes. God. Um, Nicole says, my horse and I got first place in both our ride and die and aquathlon. Aquath- aquath- How do you say that? Aquathlon? Aqu- 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 <laughs> no, I can't say. <laughs> it has no meaning. We've said it too many times. Blah, blah, blah. Aquathlon. Aquathlon. Aquathon. Aquathon or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Why can't I say that word? Okay. She said, I'd first so world problem. <laughs> I know. I want to do one and then another one in two weeks. But my husband and I were going to go on a trip together that weekend. Do I ditch the hubby or do I stay with the horse? What do I do? God, that's Which, tough. Who pays the bills, the horse or the hubby? Oh, she pays the bills, Glenn. It's not the hubby who pays you the bills. You assume that, okay? but it's not always the case. It's not always the case that women pay the bills. Girls pay bills, too. <laughs> Jamo says, I saw a fly sheet on sale and ordered... <laughs> I ordered enough stuff that I got free shipping. So like basically the whole order was free, but I didn't read the description that the neck was sold separately. So I had to place a second order. And for that, I didn't get free shipping. (laughs) (laughs) Can I just tell you how much, how happy it makes me when you all understand we get things for free by getting them on sale and you all celebrate that. I love it. But Summer says, I saw the cutest rubber ducky themed turnout sheet set that would have been adorable on my tiny mini. But they didn't have it in her size. You're going to have to buy it anyway. She may grow. You don't know. Jessica, I smacked myself in the face with a sopping wet sandy lunge line today, and I'm still spitting sand grit out. Girl. Put on some chapstick and do that. Oh, good Lord. On that. It's so, it was so dusty in my round pin yesterday. I'm riding a horse and he's just like running around and I just put chapstick on. And when I read this last night, I was like literally licking dirt off my lips. So I get you. I feel you. Leah says the, wet, the last one. I wanted to save this one for last. Hold on. Where'd it go? Leah says the weather has been beautiful in New York these past few days. And all I want to do is ride. But it's also sailing weather, and my boat is only in the water for like another few weeks. So I like have to decide whether to go boating or ride my horse. Okay, oh there's two God. of the most expensive hoppies in the world. <laughs> <laughs> She's got them both. I, I wonder if she so plays golf, too. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a golfing tournament that I'm going to be in this weekend. <laughs> I'm going to take my boat oh. to the golf course. And- Hold on. I'm a harness driver, too. I've got a driving <laughs> competition. How expensive Fantastic. can you get? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You're my hero. You're my hero. I want to know from her. Who is it? Leah. Leah. D- does the horse break down more or the boat? And which one is more expensive? Because we've heard that boats are more expensive than horses. We need to know from you firsthand. Which one is more expensive? I hope it's horses because my husband now has a boat. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> What's better than the plane? They're probably even more expensive. Uh, what a douche. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for today, by the way. There, because Jamie's doing clinic this week with uh, some listeners, actually. Yes, uh, I'm uh, so excited. Two of the horses arrived, and then our final participant flies in today. And oh, they'll good. be here all the way through Monday, actually. I didn't realize. So we're going to do just... It's just horse camp all week for for girls and horses, so it's going to be a lot of fun. In that, 
that and that means we will not be having a post show this week because you got to head out and teach. I uh, do, and but, I have my farrier here right now. I'm seeing them pulling in right now. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the first day of poop week. We have more tomorrow. We're gonna do a little bit of poop week and endurance tomorrow, and then talk about endurance also. And then we'll be back on Wednesday and Friday, and you definitely still get your weird news and your really bad ads into us. And we did have a submission by a person who wrote a poetry book. A professional. A professional that wrote a poetry book, an author, and she recorded some of the poems that include horse poop, and we're going to end the shows this week with her. So we'll see y'all. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you to Poseidon Animal Health for their sponsorship this week. Hey there, everyone. My name is Linda Dratto, and the following poem is from my new poetry collection, The Lighter Side of Horse Manure. (laughs) The book may be purchased from www.finishinglinepress.com. Check out their bookstore and search under my name. You'll also find my earlier poetry collection for sale there. Remember this day. My horse gave me a funny look today. As if he felt he just had to say, again, you carry my manure away, such doggedness and care you display. And I want to ask you, who gives a shit? You watch me eat, measure my weight, act enthralled to see that I ate. You ask enough when I stare at the gate. Is this a natural human trait? Really, I ask you, who gives a shit? We've one shot at life, yet you share yours with mine. Carrying buckets and shovels seems fine. I don't really care how you spend your time, but yes, without you, my health would decline. So thank you. Now get on with your sh-